the king of Ireland's son has found his way to the old woman of beer and she knows a boy named Gilly and so now the king of Ireland's son has met Gilly of the goatskin and it turns out that Gilly of the goatskin has come to the woman's house to tell his unique tale at exactly the same time that the king of Ireland's son has come to this house to hear the unique tale. So how convenient that they both came at the same time. So they are out back trying to count the horns to tell the old woman of beer uh, how old she is. So now we are going to hear, um, as the, uh, the uh, narrator says, while the king of Ireland's son is in the quarry pit, I will tell you the adventures of Gilly the lad or servant of the goat skin, which adventures are written in the crane skin book. He never stirred out of the cradle till he was past 12 years of age, but lay there day and night, long days and short days. The only garment he ever put on was a goat skin. A hunter had once put it down on the floor beside his cradle, and he reached out with his two hands, drew it in and put the goat skin on him. He got his name and his coat at the same time, for he was called ever afterwards Gilly of the Goatskin. But although he never stirred out of the cradle, Gilly of the Goatskin had ways of diverting himself. He used to shoot arrows with a bow out of the door of the house and hit a mark on a tree that was opposite him. And where did he get the bow and arrows? The bow fell down from the roof of the house and into the cradle. And as for the arrows, he used to make them out of the wands that the hags brought in to make baskets with. But the hags never saw him using the bow and sending off arrows. All day they would be going along the streams, gathering the willow wands for the baskets they made. He knew nobody except the three hags of the long teeth, and he had never heard the name of mother or father. Often when she was peeling the wands with a black-handled knife, the hag of the house used to tell Gilly of the goatskin the troubles that were in store for him, danger from the sword and the spear, and the knife from the water and fire, from the beasts of the earth and the birds of the air. She delighted to tell him about the evils that would befall him, and she used to laugh when she told him he was a humpback and that people would throw stones at him. One day when the hags were away gathering willow wands, Gilly turned the cradle over and lay under it. He wanted to see what they would do when they did not see him sitting up in the cradle. They came in. Gilly looked through a crack in the cradle and saw the hags. They were old and crooked and had long teeth that came down below their chins. He's gone, he's gone, he's gone, screamed the hag of the house when she did not see Gilly in the cradle. He's gone, said one of the long-toothed hags. I told you he would go away. Why didn't you cut out his heart yesterday or the day before? Mind what I tell you, said the other hag of the long teeth. Mind what I tell you, his father's son will grow into a powerful champion. Not he, said the hag of the house with great anger. He'll never become a champion. He's only a little humpbacked fellow with no weapons and with no garment but a goat skin. It would be better to kill him when he comes back, said the first of the hags with the long teeth. And if he doesn't come back, tell the giant Crom Dove, said the second. Gilly of the goat skin crept from under the cradle put his bow resting on the bottom that was now turned uppermost, took up some of the rods that were on the floor, and then shouted at the hags, "'Oh, if that's a hazel rod, he has his bow and he will kill us all!' they screamed out together. He drew back the string, fired the willow rod, and struck the middle hag full on the breast. The three hags fell on the ground. The pot that was always hanging over the fire turned itself upside down, and the house was filled with smoke. Gilly of the goatskin, the bow in his hand, sprang across the cradle, over the threshold of the door, and out into the width and the height, the length and the breadth, the gloom and the gleam of the world. He was out, as I have said, in the width and the height, the length and the breadth, the gloom and the gleam of the world. 
He fired arrows into the air. He leaped over ditches. He rolled down hillsides. He raced over level places until he came to what surprised him more than all the things in the world, a river. He had never seen such water before, and he wondered to see it moving with swiftness. Where is it going? said Gilly of the goatskin. Does it go on like that in the night as well as in the day? He ran by its side and shouted to the river. He saw a wide-winged bird flying across it. It was the bird that we call the crane or the heron. And as Gilly watched the great winged thing, he saw that it held a little animal in its claws. Gilly fired an arrow, and the crane dropped towards the ground. The little animal that was in its claws fell down. The crane rose up again and flew back across the river. The little animal that had been in the claws of the crane came to Gilly of the goatskin. It was smaller than the one-eyed cat that used to sit on the hearth of the hag of the house. It kept its head up and was very bold looking. Good morning, lad in the goatskin, it said to Gilly. You saved my life and I'm very thankful to you. What are you, said Gilly of the goatskin. I'm the weasel. I'm the boldest and bravest creature in this country. I am the lion of these parts, I am, and, said the weasel, I never served anyone before, but I'll be your servant for a quarter of a year. Tell me what way you're going, and I'll go with you. I'm going the way he's going, said Gilly, nodding towards the river, and I'll keep beside him till he turns, till he wants to turn back. Oh, then you'll have to go a long way, said the weasel, but I'll go with you no matter how far you go. The weasel walked by Gilly's side very bravely and very independently. Oh, look, said Gilly to the weasel. What is that that's in the water? The weasel looked and saw a crystal egg in the shallows. It's an egg, said the weasel. I often eat one myself. I'll bring it up from the bottom to you. I'm good at carrying eggs. The weasel went into the water and put his mouth to the egg and tried to lift it. He could not move it. He tried to lift it with his paws as well as with his mouth, but this did not do either. He came up the bank then and said to Gilly, You'll think I'm a poor sort of servant because I can't take an egg out of the water, but if I can't win one way, I'll win another way. He went into the reeds by the river and he said, Hear me, frogs, there's a great army coming to take you out of the reeds and eat you red and raw. Then Gilly saw the queer frogs lifting up their heads. Oh, what will we do? What will we do? They cried to the weasel. There's only one thing to be done, said the weasel. You gather up all the pebbles in the bed of the river and we'll make a big wall on the bank to defend you. The frogs dived into the water at once and dragged up pebbles. Gilly and the weasel piled them on the bank. Then three frogs carried up the crystal egg. The weasel took it from them when they left it on the bank. Then he climbed a tree and cried out to the frogs, the army is frightened and is running away. Oh, thank you, thank you, said the frogs. We'll never forget your goodness to us. Then they sat down in the marsh and told each other what a narrow escape they had all had. The weasel gave Gilly the crystal egg. It was heavy and he carried it for a while in his hand. They went on. After a while, said Gilly of the goatskin, the night's coming on and the river shows no sign of turning back. I wish there was a nice place to shelter us. No sooner did he say the word than he and the weasel found themselves standing before the open door of a nice little house. They went in. A clear fire was burning on the hearth, an armchair was before it, and a bed was made on the other side of the fire. This is good, said Gilly, and now I wish we had something to eat. No sooner did he say the words than a table appeared with bread and meat, fruit and wine on it. Where do these fine things come from, I wonder, said Gilly of the goatskin. It's my belief, said the weasel, that all these things come to us on account of the egg you have in your hand. It's a magic egg. Gilly of the goatskin put the egg on the table and wished that he might see himself as he had seen himself in the river. Nothing appeared. Then he took the egg in his hand and wished again. And then there was a looking glass on the wall before him and he saw himself in it better than he had seen himself in the river. Gilly of the goatskin knew that he had only to hold the crystal egg in his hand and wish to get all he could think of. 
Gilly of the goatskin wished for wide windows in his house, and he got them. He wished for a light within when there was darkness without, and he got a silver lamp that burned until he wished to sleep. He wished for the songs of birds, and he had a blackbird singing upon his half door, a lark over his chimney, a goldfinch and a green linnet within his window, and a shy wren in the evening singing from the top of his dresser. Then he wished to hear the conversation of the beasts and all the creatures of the fields and the wood, and the mountain top came into his house. The hare used to come in early in the morning. He, would always, he was always the first visitor, and he never remained long, and always while he was there he kept running up and down the house, and he generally ended his visit by jumping through the open window. The martens, the beautiful wild cats of the wood, came in to see Gilly once. They were very proud and told him nothing. The little black rabbits were much impressed by the martens, and all the time the martens were there, they stayed under the bed and the chairs. Two or three times the king of the wood himself, the boar of the bristles and the long tusks, came to see Gilly. He used to push open the door and then stand in the middle of the floor grunting and grunting. Once he brought his wife with him and six or seven of their little pigs that went running over the floor with their ears hanging over their eyes came with them too. The hedgehogs used to come, but they always made themselves disagreeable. They just lay down by the fire and snored, and when they wakened up, they quarreled with each other. Everybody said that the hedgehog's children were very badly brought up and very badly provided for. The squirrels, who were so clean and careful and so fond of their children, thought the hedgehogs were very bad creatures indeed. It's just like them to have dirty, sticky thorns around them instead of nice, clean fur, said the squirrel's wife. But, my dear, said the squirrel, every animal can't have fur. How well, said she, the rabbits have fur, though dear knows they're, they're creatures of not much account. It's all just to let us see that there's some relation of that horrible, horrible boar that goes crashing and marching through the wood. The deer never came into the house, and Gilly had a shed made for them outside. They would come into it and stay there for many nights and days, and Gilly used to go out and talk with them. They knew about far countries and strange paths and passes, but they did not know so much about men and about the doings of other creatures as the fox did. The fox used to come in the evening and stay until nearly morning, whether Gilly fell asleep or kept awake. The fox was a very good talker. He used to lie down at the hearth with his paws stretched out and tell about this one and that one, and what she said and what he did. If the fox came to see you, and if he was in good humor for talking, you would stay up all night to listen to him. I know I should. It was the fox who told Gilly what the crow of Achill did to Lahin the eagle. She had stolen the crystal egg that Lahin was about to hatch, the crystal egg that the crane had left on a bare rock. It was the fox who told Gilly how the first cat came into the world, and it was the fox who told Gilly about the generations of the eel. All I say is that it is a pity the fox cannot be trusted for a better one to talk and tell a story. It would be hard to find. He was always picking up and eating things that had been left over a potato roasting in the ashes, an apple left upon a plate, a piece of meat under a cover. Gilly did not grudge these things to Rory the fox, and he always left something in a bag for him to take home to the young foxes. I had nearly forgotten to tell you about Gilly's friend, the brave weasel. He had made a home for himself under the roof. Sometimes he would go away for a day or two, so he would never tell Gilly where he had been. When he was at home, he made himself the doorkeeper of Gilly's house. If any of the creatures made themselves disagreeable by quarreling amongst each other, or by being uncivil to Gilly, the weasel would just walk over to them and look them in the eyes. Then that creature went away. Always he held his head up, and if Gilly asked him for advice, he would say three words, Have no fear, have no fear. One day, Gilly wanted to have a bunch of cherries with his dinner, and he went to find the crystal egg so that he might wish for it. The crystal egg was not in the place he had left it. He called the weasel, and the two of them searched the house. The crystal egg was nowhere to be found. One of the creatures has stolen the egg, said the weasel. 
but whoever stole it, I will make bring it back. I'll soon find out who did it. The weasel walked up to every creature that came in, looked him or her in the eye, and said, Did you steal the crystal egg? And every creature that came in said, No, little lion, I did not steal it. The next day they had examined every creature except the fox. The fox had not been in the night before, nor the night before that again. He did not come in the evening, they missed the crystal egg, nor the evening after that evening. That night the weasel said, As sure as there are teeth in my head, the fox stole the crystal egg. As soon as there is light, we'll search for him and make him give the egg back to us.